This is the Aqua Dome, part of the Aqua Science program here at Riverview. We have elementary kids that come through the planetarium, view the Stars to Starfish show, and then my students who are part of the internship program take them and escort them into the Aqua Dome, which you're going to see today. And we have about 10 stations set up and they explain various aspects of environmental science, the various aspects of what is going on in the ecosystem around Florida, and you get to see all the different fish and so forth in the aquadome. All right, well the kids come through and they have many stations that they go and learn about different segments of uh, what we learn. My group is learning about the rotifers and how we cultivate them and uh, what we do with them, we actually feed them to baby clownfish because we hatch the baby clownfish here at school. My station was clownfish. A lot of kids, of course, know clownfish because of Finding Nemo, but we want to show them that clownfish aren't just orange and like white. We want to show them that things aren't as just like the movies portray, but that in the wild it's much vaster and different. And our main goal is to tell the kids about how the clownfish change from being all males to uh, one becoming a female. And seeing their faces and their reactions to that uh, is really cool. We've gotten, uh, oh, so clownfish are like the Hulk. They just transform when they're really mad or, you know, tough. And I'm like, well, yeah, sort of. But um, so that's the main thing. We also like to tell them about the symbiotic relationship that clownfish have with sea anemones. And then we simply decided on topics that were related to the Common Core science standards and uh, selected uh, 10 topics that we could teach them easily in the, in the Aquadome. And then they kind of did their own background research. I had them do presentations in the class. So they were each teaching each other the different topics. And then we just practiced actually a couple times. We used students here on campus. We used our internship program. And then we set up our 10 stations. And then they went around and actually trained that way. Nothing is a better way to learn about a particular field than to teach it. And so if you have to explain it to the students, then you're going to learn about it. And I use that tool here as well. We have Riverview High School executive interns that work with us. And after they've worked with us for a while, I have them go around and explain to me what the systems are doing and how they work. Seeing these elementary and middle school kids, they look up to high school kids and it's wonderful to see them. They will sit and listen for an hour if they need to, to anything they're saying and they just absorb it. They're like little sponges taking it all in. So I see the interaction. I'm generally in the background at that point and I can tell you that they are learning lots when they're coming through here. I work at the, one of the tilapia stations. I mainly talk about the age groups we have here, the three different age groups. And I also talk about what they eat in the wild, what we feed them here. And a big thing I teach them about is mouth brooding and what, why that's so unique to tilapia and what all that involves. I feel like when it's coming from an adult, you just hear it a certain amount of times and it just goes one end ear and out the other. But when you're able to be taught by a teenager, someone that little kids may look up to, they're able to absorb it a little bit more and take it in fully. I think it really is important for us to have a hands-on experience because I I've tr personally believe that that is the best way for us to learn because anyone can look stuff up on the internet, but to actually see it and be able to touch it and interact with it is something really special. 
I really feel like this is an opportunity for students to get engaged in science and that's not always an easy thing to do. It's wonderful to go visit Moat Marine and SeaWorld and all the various places, but here they actually get an opportunity to come up with ideas on their own, to not just be shown things, but to actually incorporate what they're learning and come up with their own projects, perhaps a science fair, perhaps something that'll be published. One of the things about aquaculture is that it is a very applied science. It incorporates many different types of uh, educational fields, everything from chemistry to mathematics, to marketing, to biology, to uh, the science of the oceans. And so there's a whole suite of different things that come together to form the field of aquaculture. And so when students are involved in that, even if they don't end up in the field later on, they've learned a lot of different tools and how to integrate them together. And of course, here in this country, we have a big emphasis on the need to expand the STEM programs, the science, technology, and mathematics programs through education. And this is a perfect example of one that's working that way, where they've got these teams that are covering all the different aspects of the day-to-day -day life and incorporating those together into a educational program where they're learning that science. And, you know, I can't say enough about how important it is for us to get people in better touch with the need to both conserve the environment and the environmental resources and to produce seafood. Here's the spider crab, guys, if you want to see how it feels. This is called a spider crab. This is just a baby spider crab. If you guys want to touch on it. No, it doesn't bite. It doesn't hurt. doesn't hurt at all. It doesn't hurt at all. It's amazing to watch when a group of young children come and they go through the Aquadome and they're at stations with our interns. The rapport between the younger students and the older students, the excitement in the younger students, the poise, the confidence, and the expertise of the docents is a wonderful match. I learn things from them too, because they point things out that I wouldn't have thought of, and Ms. Raj often tells us that that's how she feels with us too, so. <laughs> Whatever field they go into, they kind of, I'm modeling that work ethic, and so they're kind of following my example. We're learning many different aspects. A lot of them are interested in marine science, so some component of that career. So that's what I'm hoping they take those on to future careers. This is our famous touch tank. All the kids are always happy to see the touch tank. If they're involved with this program and they are teaching young elementary school students about the field of science and how those fish breed and talking about that with them, they're getting that experience in public speaking. They're getting the experience in education. There's a whole suite of things they can end up doing later on that those tools will help them accomplish. And I think those are the things students walk away with. There's a confidence level that is so obvious after they've begun the program as compared to before. But then on the flip side of that, the students who basically um, were responsible for setting up the Aquadome last year were engineering interns and they learned basically how to engineer, construct, um, manage the water quality, all the systems that go with that, those are those on-the-job skills that actually translate into the workplace. This is great for the Sarasota County School Board to have because it gives them a way to have their students teaching their students. As opposed to having to outsource and go out to other facilities to learn stuff, they can go to one of their facilities that they run and they manage and they can teach their students by the students they've taught in the past. Uh, we want these kids to feel like when they come to this school that they can become a part of this program. And that's the main thing. We want to make it fun, want to make them want to learn more and want to do more. So when they do come to high school, if, if not here, any other school, get a program like this going. And it, it's a big learning ex experience for everyone. But then we always try to get the point across that uh, you can do what we're doing. It's not just us doing it. It's like you're the future and this is eventually the legacy we're leaving for you. Students are linked together with a world-class research program and that is a good bridge because it allows us to transfer technology or transfer knowledge to students, but it also allows those students to see what it's like to be involved in a research effort. 
And Moat Marine Laboratory has many aspects of research that cover all the fields of marine science. Many of the students that work here don't end up going into aquaculture, but they've learned about the different aspects of what we do at this lab, and maybe they'll go on and do an internship in their college program, either at Moat or at another lab, in another field of the sciences. And we have such a shortage of American scientists coming out and going into the field, it's incredible. I think the, the career pathways are many for students. And because aquaculture is such a big industry in Florida and in this part of the country, there are jobs for students. We rely on the industry. Like I said, UF Aquaculture Park and Malt Marine are our primary partners. Basically, the design of our center is based on their designs, working with them and their technical staff. I'm thinking about it, definitely. It's a lot of fun, and I'm realizing how much you can do with it. There's a lot of different fields in marine science I did not originally know about, and I'm beginning to realize how broad this field of marine science is, and I'm definitely looking into it. My dad's in the scuba diving business, so I'm already uh, very involved.